maps. Nowadays, it's easy to dismiss them as old-timey and obsolete. Nothing more than an expected feature in pretty much every video game, right? Especially now that GPS is available on a device that's in most of our pockets. But it's arguable that society is the way it is today, thanks in part to maps. They help us understand our surroundings by use of significant landmarks, be they natural or man-made. They helped pirates locate their booty, and they helped the Goonies... I don't know, do the same, I guess? I was always more of a monster squad guy. Of course, mapping the planet's surface has not been enough for humanity. As our technology improves and we are able to detect more objects in space, both local and distant, our understanding of our place in the grander cosmos is also improving. I'm Eric Malachi, and today on Science Guide, we'll be looking at the methods being utilized to give us the most accurate 3D mapping of the Milky Way to date. Considering that the Milky Way is visible to the naked eye, it's likely that man has been aware of it to some degree since we first started looking up at the sky. Kiff, write that down. Regardless, it has only been in the past hundred years that we have been able to observe other galaxies, allowing us to piece together what our own might actually look like. You know, because we can't actually look at the galaxy from a distance because we're in it. Shout out to Hubble for starting us down that particular road. The man, not the telescope. Since Hubble's time, our attempts to look anywhere inward towards the galaxy's center have been halted by a nearly impenetrable wall of dust and gas that definitely makes a better door than a window. In previous attempts to construct what the Milky Way might look like at a distance, we took note of what was bright enough to pierce through that, compared it to what we observed from other galaxies, and made very educated guesses as to the structure of the Milky Way like with the very spiral nature of our galaxy. According to study lead author Dorota Scouron, the number of main spiraling arms is still debated, also the severity of the spiraling arms. As for the understanding of its mass and size, those kept changing as the technology to gaze inward towards the galactic bulge improved. And in fact, recent findings suggest that the Milky Way might actually be twice as big as we suspected. The fact that it took us until the 1970s to even confirm the existence of a supermassive black hole in its center says a lot about how slow our progress towards studying the Milky Way in the 20th century was. Not for a lack of trying, of course. We were just working with what we had. In comes the team at the Astronomical Society at Warsaw University in Poland and their work with a project known as OGLE. The OGLE project predates this particular endeavor by nearly 20 years. Back in the early 90s, it was put to the use of detecting gravitational micro-lensing events coming from the center of our galaxy. Since then, as is the case with many ground-based observatories, improvements have been implemented. In addition to detecting numerous exoplanets, OGLE monitors the brightness of billions of stars. Of them all, exactly one kind stands out as the protagonist of this story, a type of star that makes Scouron's study possible. Bright cosmic beacons known as Cepheid variables. Cepheids are young stars that are plentifully found throughout this fine galaxy of ours. If they were giant floating brains, they'd be an ambitious young squad with everything to prove. As stars, they have some characteristics that make them crucial to this study. Firstly, they're bright like really bright, up to hundreds of thousands of times brighter than our own star, making them more than enough to pierce that aforementioned visual noise in our inner galaxy. Another key feature is how regularly they pulsate with a transition from bright to dim and back again that can take anywhere from one to 100 days. Both of those traits make them ideal for astronomical distance measurement. The former because, well, we need to be able to see them, and the latter because that's how we are able to pinpoint a distance to them with an accuracy better than 5%. It was this kind of star that helped Edwin Hubble determine that Andromeda is, in fact, a separate galaxy. And in a more present-day example, Cepheids are helping scout on and her team, including collaborators from Ohio State University and England's University of Warwick, piece together a 3D map of our galaxy. The team spent a long time painstakingly charting the distance between the Sun and over 2,400 Cepheids throughout the Milky Way, most of which were discovered by Ogle. In the words of Scouton, this took six long years, but it was worth it. As mentioned at the beginning of this section, our ability to determine the distance between us and a Cepheid is incredibly accurate. This gave us some very interesting insight that blows up some preconceived notions about the Milky Way. Where to even begin with this? 
Let's start with what we knew of the galaxy's structure leading into this. The Milky Way is a spiral galaxy with a bar-shaped core region surrounded by a flat disk of dust, gas, and stars. The first thing that we can debunk is the flat part. Aim for the flat top! Judging by the researchers' studies, the disk begins to warp at distances greater than 25,000 light years, and not by insignificant amounts. Our map shows that the Milky Way disk is not flat. Instead, it is deformed and twisted in shape, says study co-author with a name that I am not even going to attempt to pronounce. You're welcome. Warping of the galactic disk has been detected before, but this is the first time we can use individual objects to trace its shape in three dimensions. According to Scouron, the amount of warping they saw was surprisingly pronounced. She goes on to say it is not some statistical fact available only to a scientist's understanding. It is apparent by the eye. As of now, we only have guesses as to what is causing that distortion. It could be from an interaction with one of our satellite galaxies, intergalactic gas, or even dark matter. Honestly, it's still too early to say for sure. That's just one of the areas that we hope to explore with further studies into this topic. Because believe you me, there are future plans to refine this 3D map. Cepheids are far from the only classification of variable stars out there. The more reference points we use as galactic landmarks, the better of an understanding we can get of the shape and size of our home. And if these landmarks are older stars, this can help us see how the oldest parts of the Milky Way have changed over time. And to our more astute viewers, who are wondering how a sample size of thousands can represent a structure consisting of billions of stars, bear in mind that this is not too dissimilar to the way that cartography is done here on Earth. Painting a larger picture based on limited survey points is a common practice. It just goes to show you that sometimes the oldest tricks are the best tricks. But that's where we're going to leave you for today. What did you think of the images released by Scouton and her team? Am I the only one craving chocolate, nougat, and caramel? after this. Oh, while researching this script, James came across articles about the European Space Agency's Gaia missions that are also mapping the galaxy. While you're in the comments, let us know if you want us to cover that in a future video as well. Until then, do all that algorithmic jazz and like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss our next video. Make sure you join our Discord to participate in science-type discussions with fellow nerds, and also our- oh! Look at all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Cowboy.